that you love. Show them no mercy. I thought I knew what a big movie was. Until I came onto this. This movie, for me, existed. I'm getting a chance to tell a story that I've been thinking about for quite a while. Elementally, for 20 years. It's a story of a few against many, impossible odds, good versus evil. I was really excited about Zack. I just really value and admire his enthusiasm for the craft. We had a solid two months of preparing the body to get to that place. I hadn't quite anticipated the physical requirements of this. I've never trained that much. I just really wanted to make a giant atmospheric and space adventure. I mean, it is gargantuan. It's so, so, so big. So ambitious. We get to traverse the darker corners of this universe. And it's only the beginning. We'll have a huge anticipation for this film. It's amazing. Something so powerful that you just want more. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Netflix dropped a trailer for Rebel Moon showing a whole bunch of the movie, the characters, so we'll break it all down. We finally know who most of the people are playing, and Zack Snyder's been talking about it a lot. He said the movie actually started life as a Star Wars movie that he was going to make for Lucasfilm before he started doing all the Snyderverse of movies back with Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, and Justice League. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We'll be getting more trailers pretty soon because the movie's coming out at the end of this year. And Zack Snyder said since he moved on from Justice League Snyder Cut, he's actually turning Rebel Moon into a large franchise for Netflix. So there'll be spin-offs and a lot of other tie-in stuff that he's developing too. He already confirmed that Rebel Moon is going to be a two-part movie, at least his first one. But he'll be doing more movies in this universe after. They haven't said when Rebel Moon Part 2 is coming out. It's either going to be next year or the year after that. It won't be that long. It stars Charlie Hunnam, Jaiman Hansu, Anthony Hopkins, Sophia Patella, a whole bunch of familiar faces that you see like Ed Screen. Velt was a settlement known mostly for farming. It's where the heroes of Rebel Moon started their journey when the Imperium arrived for their food. Ray Fisher is playing Darian Bloodaxe alongside his sister Debra. They're low resource resistance fighters. Charlie Hunnam is playing Kai. He's a mercenary. Jaiman Hansu's General Titus was an Imperium general or former general who turned on the world he once defended to live a sad life fighting in a coliseum. His experience being a general in their forces scarred him, causing him to leave and become a gladiator. He was a former ally of Korra, so when she's looking to defend Velt from the Imperium, he's the first person that she goes to. Michelle Huisman is playing Gunner. He's another farmer living on Velt that becomes part of their resistance. Carrie Elways, of all people, is playing the king of the Galactic Empire, like the king of the Imperium. Fra Free is playing the Regent Balisarius. He's the leader of the Imperium invasion. Ed Screen is playing the Admiral Noble, who's another leader in their forces. These really crazy looking people behind them in these awesome costumes are called scribes. They're part of a religious group on the Imperium homeworld tasked with writing down the history of the galaxy. Within the universe of Rebel Moon, they call the Imperium's homeworld Mother World. But a lot of the history that the scribes write down is influenced by the politics of the Imperium. So they aren't always necessarily writing down the true history of the galaxy. The shirtless dude here with the crazy abs is Tarek. He was a member of a noble family in the Imperium, but after his family had a run with Mother World, Tarek wound up owing a life debt to a rancher for whom he worked as an indentured servant, honor bound to see out his debt. So when Korra is going around trying to recruit resistance fighters, he initially refuses but eventually agrees to join them. As you would expect, it looks like it's going to be super crazy in a good way. The movie's about a peaceful colony on the edge of the galaxy that's threatened by the armies of a tyrannical regent named Belisarius. The desperate civilians dispatch a young woman who has mysterious past to seek out warriors from nearby planets to help them challenge the region. 
Anthony Hopkins is playing Jimmy. He's a robot knight, this character here. And Sophia Batella is playing the titular Korra, who's going around trying to defend the planet. Netflix also just released a teaser trailer for their live-action Avatar The Last Airbender. I did a video for it, so I'll link it at the end of this. But I don't think her name Korra was inspired by Korra from the Legend of Korra in the Avatar universe. The large ship landing seems like it belongs to the evil Regent character. If it wasn't clear when he's talking about it, it's actually a two-part movie. Like, this is just part one of Rebel Moon. Part two will be a completely separate film that he's working on later. So I'm assuming there'll be some kind of cliffhanger at the end of the first movie. This is actually Zack Snyder talking about the film with Michael Giacchino, who just got done directing Werewolf by Night for Marvel. Yeah, you know, the movie's about, like, um, a commun uh, planet, um, kind of not in our, you know, it's, it's a space fantasy, so it's kind of not, there's no Earth, necessarily. There's a community on a planet, a farming planet, and um, these, uh, there's a bunch of bad guys, um, the Mother World's armies are in the area and they need to be fed, so they they come to the village and ask for uh, the village to feed them, basically, while they're doing their war uh, in that area of the galaxy. And, of course, um, they are not uh, kind about asking, and the result will probably be the obliteration of the village, and so the villagers decide to fight, and so, you know, they have to go out into the galaxy and collect some soldiers, to warriors to help them. But as he talks about it, he says that he hopes this Rebel Moon will turn into its own special thing, like its own franchise, and do more films after it. He does talk a little bit about his Star Wars influences there, but he's talked about this in the past as well. Originally, what happened is about 10 years ago, before Disney bought Star Wars, and before he'd finished releasing the first Man of Steel Superman movie, Disney had started taking pitches for what would become the Star Wars sequel trilogy, like Star Wars The Force Awakens, and he, like many other directors at the time, pitched his take to Lucasfilm. So for a brief hot second, there was a chance that he was going to make the Snyderverse version of the Star Wars sequel movies. He said his pitch was rejected at the time, but this was back in 2012 when they said no to his ideas. And he says out of that, he took his original Star Wars pitch and took out the trademark Star Wars stuff, the locations of the characters like Luke Skywalker and the like, and essentially just reimagined everything as the exact same type of movie, same scenario that looked and moved the same way, same basic story in general, just no Star Wars copyrighted stuff. Maybe with a Wilhelm scream, but that's not copyrighted, like no studio owns the Wilhelm scream. And named it Rebel Moon, like Rebel as in Rebels from Star Wars, but imagined it as an Endor type of movie like he mentions during his interview. He hasn't fully revealed exactly what would have happened in his Star Wars movies, but he said it was meant to be a darker, grittier Kurosawa Seven Samurai type of film on a planet like Endor, which is where all the Star Wars comes in, obviously. George Lucas had said for a long time that the original Star Wars movies were heavily inspired by Kurosawa's samurai films like Hidden Fortress. So it makes sense that Zack Snyder would pitch something based on similar things. And after they turned him down and he took the name Rebel Moon and the scenario, a lot of the characters, and just took the Star Wars out. When you look at the trailer footage here and you listen to the synopsis for the movie, it does feel like a very Seven Samurai Kurosawa type of movie. Bunch of badasses get together to protect a village from a really powerful force. When he says a dark and grittier take on Star Wars, a good example would be his DC movies like Batman v Superman, the Justice League Snyder Cut, movies that go way harder just in general than you would expect, in the very specific hyper-stylized look that Zack Snyder gives to all of his movies, but done in space opera style. I don't know how things would have turned out if he had wound up making the Star Wars sequel movies. It sounds like he would have had to lead the DC movies early on if that had happened. Because if he was pitching a Star Wars trilogy in 2012 before Man of Steel was out, it sounds like at that time his contract to come back for Batman v Superman and Justice League hadn't been finalized yet. Or Warner Brothers was just waiting out Man of Steel to see how it would perform financially in theaters before they hired him back. At the time that was all happening, you remember the slate of DC movies that they had planned was completely different. That changed a couple times over the years. When they hired him to come back after Man of Steel, it was for Batman v Superman with the idea that they had already planned on doing his Justice League trilogy. Like by the time they hired him to come back for Batman v Superman, they're like, okay, we're going to let you do Justice League now. And that's why they let him do Man of Steel 2 as a Batman v Superman movie instead of just a straight up Man of Steel 2 sequel like they would do with most directors because they were trying to get their Justice League movie out within a couple of years of that, and they wanted to get all the characters together way faster. It wasn't until Batman v Superman was released in theaters in 2015 that Warner Brothers started messing with the Justice League trilogy of movies. When Batman v Superman came out in theaters, they were already deep in production on the first Justice League movie, and critical response was so polarizing to that to Batman v Superman that Warner Brothers freaked 
They canceled Justice League 3, like they told him that he could only do two Justice League movies, so they had to get all of his story out in two movies now. And a little while after that, they did it again. They freaked again and said he could only do one Justice League movie. And then tragedy struck. His daughter died. And we saw what happened next. Joss Whedon came on. It turned into a huge debacle for several years. Cut to recently, he came back to do his original plan for the Justice League Snyder Cut with a few minor tweaks and additions because he didn't know if he'd ever get to come back for more. And that's how we got the Justice League Snyder Cut. He did reveal what his full plans were originally for Justice League sequels 2 and 3. I've done a much larger video for it because there is so much stuff in there like they would have been huge. I'll post a link for that video in the description below because it gets just as crazy as you would expect it to. They actually asked him point blank if he's coming back to do more DC movies like have they contacted you to come back and do more after the Justice League Snyder Cut? As he says he has not been subsequently contacted by any of the new people at Warner Brothers in DC about the Snyderverse of movies or doing more DC films. And I don't think that he's lying about that. Like, I think he's trying to basically say, no, they haven't said anything to me yet. And you have to remember that I think this interview was happening before James Gunn was hired by DC. So at the time, Henry Cavill still thought that he was coming back as Superman for more Man of Steel movies. Gal Gadot was still making Wonder Woman 3. They were still planning on building up to a new movie version of Crisis on Infinite Earths, like a much bigger version of the one that we saw in the DC TV series. But then James Gunn was hired like a month after that and elected to reboot pretty much everything. Not every single thing, like not 100%, but like 99% of it. He did say before the end of January, he would reveal the full DC phase one of movies. And we know that there's going to be a brand new Superman movie during that because he revealed that he's actually been writing a new Superman movie with the younger Superman. But recently people saw him reading All-Star Superman and that is probably one of the better Superman stories. So a lot of people are like, wait a minute, does that mean that the new Superman movie is inspired by All-Star Superman? It sounds like it'll be an original story, like it won't be a direct comic adaptation. But I will do videos for all the big announcements that he winds up making. That should happen pretty soon. So make sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss those videos. We'll probably see the next big Rebel Moon trailer in a couple months. They're still working on post-production for the movie. There were a bunch of other trailers that Netflix just dropped I just did videos for. You can click here for my Netflix Avatar The Last Airbender trailer video in Easter eggs and click here for my Flash movie alternate ending and post credit scene with Henry Cavill, Superman, the Justice League, a bunch of other deleted scenes. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.